Honorable Governor of Goa and Chancellor of Goa University, Shri P. S. Sridharan Pillai Sir, and our special invitee, Shri Damodar Mauzo, have arrived in the hall and are being escorted by Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Harilal Menon Sir, and by the Registrar of Goa University, Professor V. S. Natkarni. Guests in the audience may kindly take their seats. To mark the solemn beginnings of the 38th Foundation Day of Goa University, I now invite a group of students from Shenoy Goibab School of Languages and Literature to sing the national anthem. I request our esteemed dignitary. A very good morning to our esteemed dignitaries on the days, off the days, special invitees, faculty members, administrative staff, students and each one of you assembled here to celebrate the 38th Foundation Day of Goa University. I, Purva Naik, extend a warm welcome to all and wish you a very happy 38th Foundation Day of Goa University. In the annals of Goa's history, Goa University as the apex educational institution and the only state university of Goa prides itself as the crowning glory of its higher education. Many of us sitting here today have had the privilege to study at this university and then to join here as a faculty member, research scholar or as a staff member. We have been fortunate to witness Goa University grow from strength to strength, from department to department, from research centre to research centre, from courses to courses and is an umbrella that shelters so many affiliated institutions. Today, we are indeed honoured to have amidst us Honourable Governor of Goa and the Chancellor of Goa University, Shri P. S. Sridharan Pillai Sir, as our chief guest and our guest speaker to grace the celebration of 38th Foundation Day. We also have a special invitee, an exemplary Kokni writer and a son of the Goan soil whose writings have put us on the global map, dearly called Bhai Mauzo, a Nyanpit awardee, Shri Damodar Mauzo, to add a sparkle to this celebration. Tumka Mai Mogatso Yokar Bhai Mauzo. I also welcome Honorable Vice Chancellor Professor Harilal B. Menon Sir and the Registrar Goa University Professor V. S. Nadkarni Sir on the days. Goa University has been living up to its motto, Knowledge is Divine, since 1985 and ensuring that it keeps enlightening the young minds in pursuit of excellence. As can be quoted from the Brahadaranyaka Upanishad, it stays true to the lines Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamsoma Jyotirgamaya, Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya, leading us from ignorance to truth, from darkness to light and from death to deathlessness. To symbolically underscore this, I request our dignitaries on the days to light the traditional lamp and illuminate this august gathering.
Thank you, dignitaries. I request you to take your seats on the dais. A bouquet of flowers expresses a welcome better than our words do. But a potted plant of flowers will remind you every day of how much we cherish the growth of our relationship with you. I invite Ma'am Professor Savita Kerkar, Dean, School of Biological Sciences and Biotechnology, to present a potted plant to our chief guest, Honorable Governor of Goa and Chancellor of Goa University, Shri P. S. Sridharan Pillai, sir. Thank you, Madam. Now I request the controller of examinations, Goa University, Professor Anuradha Vagle, ma'am, to present a potted plant to our special invitee for today, Sri Damodar Mauzo. Thank you, madam. Now I invite our honorable vice chancellor, Professor Harilal Menon, sir, to deliver his introductory address. His Excellency, Governor of Goa and Chancellor of Goa University, Sri P. S. Sridharan Pillai, the most respected Jnanabit Award winner, Sri Damodar Mauso, my colleague and registrar of Goa University, Professor Vishnu Nadkarni, Sri uh, Mihir Vardhan, the Secretary to Governor, all the deans of various schools and faculties, and all the heads of uh, non-teaching sections, all my colleagues from teaching and non-teaching fraternity, my dear uh, parents, dear students, uh, media personnel, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, it gives me a great pleasure when I think about 37 years of journey this university had done. 1985, we had planted a sapling and that sapling has grown as a very strong tree with a number of branches. In fact, this is uh, well depicted on the faces of each one who is assembled here or who is sitting over here. I am very proud to say that I am also part, party to or part of this progress from the budding stage to the blossoming stage. Um, in fact, uh, to fulfill the uh, aspirations of uh, locals, local populace in particular, and that of the nation in general, Goa University was founded in 1985, wherein we had offered a number of uh, programs ranging from Kongani to marine science. Your Excellency, I'm extremely happy to tell you that this university has been identified as you know, National Resource Center in Marine Science by Ministry of Human Resource Development. In fact, MHRD has identified 75 institutions across the country for various disciplines. Among that, this university is one. So this exemplifies the fact that how hard the faculty members are working in this university, and that has, you know, uh, made us to get this crowning glory. So therefore, during the last 35, 37 years also, this temple of learning has become a resource for academic activities and research par excellence. In fact, uh, uh, I would like to tell you that, you know, we, uh, we had already geared up to implement national education policy. As a prelude to this, we had already established a number of schools these schools are formed by amalgamating various departments, SOL departments. And this is basically to facilitate students to cross across in the sense that education policy says that you have to give lots of option to the students. So therefore, under one uh, school, we have number of programs. So this gives a leverage for the students to opt their, uh, you know, cho I mean, their choice. And in fact, I'm very happy to tell you that we have now 10 various schools and we have actually completed the formation of or the establishment of various schools and the last ones are 
Goyambab School of Language and Literature. Then we have Didi Kosambi School of uh, Social Sciences and Behavioral Studies. Then we have uh, School of Biological and Biotechnology. And then we have School of Sanskrit, Philosophy, and Indic Knowledge Studies. And uh, the education policy also stressed that the local language has to be strengthened. In this regard, we have made a modest attempt wherein we are trying to cross the borders of Goa state and we see that there are very, you know, the uh, sum of uh, population there across the state of Kerala. In fact, in Kochi itself, there are two lakhs. So our plan is that to have a center of study in Kongani in the city of Kochi. With these few remarks, let me now, you know, do my responsibility of welcoming all of you. At the outset, let me welcome our honorable, uh, uh, you know, the um, governor and the chancellor of Goa University. Sir, we are very happy and uh, we are so grateful to you for accepting our invitation and to be here and to deliver the uh, Foundation Day lectures that is on endless journey to achieve the goal. And uh, then we have with us Sri Damodar Mauso. He doesn't need any introduction. He is the winner of the topmost uh, award in the literary field is concerned. Sir, I extend a warm welcome to you. And uh, I extend a warm welcome to all those who assemble here. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It's indeed a matter of elation that on the occasion of Goa University's 38th Foundation Day, we will also witness the book release of one of our very own faculty members, Vice Dean Research, Shenoy Goibab School of Languages and Literature, who is a prolific writer in Kokni, Dr. Prakash Pariyekar. His book, Versal, by Zag Prakashan, will be shortly released now. I invite the author, Dr. Prakash Pariyekar, to share his thoughts on his book release. Honorable Governor of Goa, and Chancellor of Goa University, Sri P. S. Sridharan Pillai, Vice Chancellor of Goa University, Professor Harinal Menon, Nanapit Puraskar Prapta Kokni Lekak, Bomanadik Damodar Mauzo, Goa Vidapetatle Kulasachu, Professor Vishnu Nadkarni, Sabagaran Moti Sankin Upastit Ashile, Vegura Mahashalancha Dean, Vice Dean, Program Director, uh, Shikshak Varg, Goa Vidapetache, Prasasiki Adhikari, Academic Council and uh, uh, member, Vegaraya Mahavidalatle Pracharya, Mihir uh, Vardhan Sir, Goy Vidhapitatle Vidh Upakramatle Sanchalak, Vidhapitatle Hair Karmachari Varg, and Vidhartang Mazunamaskar. Tumka Sagrang, Atisavya, Goy Vidhapitachas Tapna Disa Nimtan, Aung Kazatan Parbi Veteta, Ais Prakashit Zaupi Versalhe, Koknitle Maje, Sapi Pustak, या प्रकाशन सुवाळ्याच्या वेळार मका बहु आनंद जाता कथा हो मजा आवडत साहित्य प्रकार आ फाटली 30 वर्ष कथा बरेता असे असले तरी या प्रकार अंतर्गत आम्ही खूप कमी बरेला पण जे किने बरेला ते सदांच बरे बरोबरचा आम्ही प्रयत्न केला मजा लेखन प्रवासान साबार जेष्ठ लेखकांचे मका मार्गदर्शन मिळा आणि आता मेरेन ते मिळत असा मजा साहित्यिक साहित्याची सदांच अपूर्वाय Karpi and Sadat Maji was Pusp Karpi, Bomanadik Damodar Mazo, Aja Pustak Prakashan Chanimtan, Vedi Charasa. My short story, Chandrakur, has been selected as world class Indian short story by Katha New Delhi in the year 2003. I have received a prestigious Katha Award at the hands of Krishna Sopti, Nanapit Award, award winning writer, Hindi writer. Eka Vishishta Bashet Barele. बरेल हे साहित्य त्या भाषेपुरतेच मर्यादित उरना ते अणकारित जाता आणि दुसरे भाषेत वता आणि मागेल ते तांचेच जाता सम ऑफ माय स्टोरीज हैव बीन ट्रान्सलेटेड इनटू हिंदी मराठी मलयालम कन्नड काश्मीरी ओरिया गुजराती इंग्लिश पोर्तुगीज एंड आल्सो अपीयर्ड इन समकालीन भारतीय साहित्य इंडियन लिटरेचर भाषा साहित्य अमृत गोवन ऑब्जर्वर गोवा टुडे एटसेट्रा सम स्टोरीज have been also selected for the various anthologies such as Kokni Katha uh, Marathit, Kathavali, The Harvest and Other Stories, uh, Katha Darpan, Kokni Kathavali, The Brave New World of Govan Writing, 
सूर्य उदयता कोकणी कथकल मलयाळामधले एक महत्त्वाची एंथॉलॉजी एक्सेट्रा मोनेळमाया चंद्रकोर गळ्यातला खोलीस आणि काजरो या कथांचेर आधारून मराठी आणि कोकणी फिल्माची निर्मिती झाल्या कोकणी फिल्म काजरो हॅज बीन प्रोड्यूस बाय दी गोवन स्टुडिओज अँड हॅज वोन बेस्ट रिजनल फिल्म अवॉर्ड ॲट सिक्स्टी सेवन नॅशनल फिल्म अवॉर्ड इंडिया दिस वन कट फिल्म हॅज बीन सेलेक्टेड फॉर ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट इंटरनॅशनल फिल्म फेस्टिवल इट्स मामी इन टू थाउजंड नाईन्टीन फिल्म फेस्टिवल ऑफ इंडिया गोवा टू थाउजंड सेवन्थ औरंगाबाद इंटरनॅशनल फिल्म फेस्टिवल टू थाउजंड ट्वेंटी बंगळुरू इंटरनॅशनल फिल्म फेस्टिवल ट्वेंटी अँड नाईन्टीन थर्ड आय एशियन फिल्म फेस्टिवल टू मुंबई कोकणी खातीर ही मानाची आणि सन्मानाची गजाल असा चान्सर असं दिस अचिवमेंट इज नॉट ओनली फॉर द नॉट ओनली फॉर द शॉर्ट स्टोरी रायटर्स अब ऑल दिस अचिवमेंट आर ऑफ माय कोकणी लँड अँड द पीपल हो सन्मान हो मानसन्मान म्हणजे भुयेचो असा कोकणी भाषेचो असा आणि कोकणी मनशाचो असा एवढ्या म्हाका एक महत्त्वाची गजाल तुमकां सांगपास जाय ती म्हणजे हो कथासंग्रह जाग प्रका प्रकाशन प्रकाशित प्रकाशित करचो अशी इच्छा हवे दोन हजार अकरा वर्षा जाग नेमाळ्याची तेन्नाची संपादक माधवी सरदेसाय हांचे कडेन उक्तायली ताची मला हंगा याद जाता म्हणजे कथेचे पुस्तक प्रकाशित करता म्हणपाचे त्या म्हणपाचे ताणी ते वेळार मला उतरही दिले पण दोन हजार चौदा वर्षा माधवी मॅडमच्या मॅडम आमच्यातल्यान गेली मुखार म्हणजे इच्छा हांवे दोन हजार एकवीस वर्षा तांचेच घरकार राजू नायका कडेन उलोवन दाखयली तांचेन रोखडोच हयकार दिलो आणि जाग प्रकाशनान वर्सो लोक म्हणजे कथासंग्रह प्रकाशित केलो तिचे दू अदिती नायक हंगा प्रकाशक या नात्यान या सभागृहात उपस्थित असा जागा खातीर खाशेले धन्यवाद म्हणजे पुस्तक हांवे कोकणी कोकणी पहिलो ज्ञानपीठ पुरस्कार जोडून दिवपी भोमानदेक रवींद्र केळेकर हांकां ओपला आयच्या कार्यावळीचे खासा आमंत्रित ज्ञानपीठ पुरस्कार पुरस्कारान सन्मानित जाल्ले भोमानदेक दामोदर मावजो हांचे या पुस्तकात प्रस्तावना बरयल्या तांचे खेळीत उपकार या पुस्तकात सोबीत सुंदर असे मुखपृष्ठ काढून दिवपी कणकवली महाराष्ट्र चित्रकार श्री नामानंद मोडक तसेच या पुस्तकाची माडावळ करपी ऋषिकेश आठवले हांचा हो बूक भाव उपकारी असा गेल्या वर्षा ऑगस्ट महिन्यात हा मानाधिक राज्यपालांक माझ्या घरच्या सयत राजभवन मेळपास गेल्लो कोकणी भास आणि साहित्याचे आस्तेन तांच्यानी माझे कडल्यान जाणून घेतले भायर सरताना हे म्हटले माय स्टोरी बुक इज इन प्रेस या वेळा तांचे कडल्यान जाप आयली आय विल बी व्हेरी हॅप्पी टू रिलीज युअर बुक मन खोशी झाले तो आनंदाचा दीस तो आनंदाचा दीस आज तुमच्या मुखार उभा असा आय पर्सनल थँक्स इज एक्सलन्सी गव्हर्नर ऑफ गोवा अँड चान्सलर फॉर गोवा युनिव्हर्सिटी श्री पी एस श्रीधरन पिल्लाई फॉर रिलीजिंग माय बुक वसल अ डीप एप्रिसिएशन टू माय वाईस चान्सलर प्रोफेसर हरिलाल मेनंदी सर फॉर एनकरेजमेंट अँड कन्सिडरिंग माय बुक रिलीज फंक्शन ऑन फाउंडेशन डे ऑफ गोवा युनिव्हर्सिटी आय कन्सिडर दिस इज ए दिस इज अ हॉनर फॉर मी and my shane gobab school of language and literature goa university thank you sir i also thank registrar professor vishnu natkarni for making every possible thing for this book release function 38 38 foundation day karyavali chi nimandrika bomanadik savita gelkar ani tanche wangda mana tanche mana pasun dhanyawad deta tase dsw che sanchalak leo mashadu sir ani tanche saglya karmachari wangda je ho खाशेले त्यांचे धन्यवाद दिता एक कार्यावळीक तुम्ही सगळ्यांनी उपस्थित राहिले खातीर तुमका सगळ्यांना धन्यवाद नमस्कार थँक्यू सर आय नाव रिक्वेस्ट आ चीफ गेस्ट ऑनरेबल गव्हर्नर ऑफ गोवा अँड चान्सलर ऑफ गोवा युनिव्हर्सिटी श्री पी एस श्रीधरन पिल्लय सर टू काइंडली रिलीज द बुक वर्सल आय ऑल्सो इन्व्हाइट the author dr prakash parekar to join the dignitaries for the book release on the days can the applaud be louder and continue Thank you dignitaries I now invite our special invitee for today 
Shri Damodar Mauzo to place on record his impressions of the book Varsal. Oh, my dear, Goy Rajya Che Rajipal, Ani Goy Vidya Pita Che Kula Guru. Oh, my dear, Shri Dhan Pillai Ji. Goy Vidya Pita Che Kula Pati, Professor Pradhyapak Menon Ji. कुलसचिव भवनेस्थ नारकर्णी जी मुझे मुखार बिचिलो गांव विद्यापीठाचो अध्यापक वर्ग इतर कर्मचारी अनि मुझे मौका तन्नाटिया इष्टानो जहाँ गांव विद्यार्थी मुन्न काम करता है भवन ओने बैनी नो मगर बहुत खुशी रहता है इसे आज समय आ रहा है तुम चुम्बित हो बिराव पड़ पर इस वाते रहा हूँ � पर्वे बेटे ता ऐसा स्थापना दिशा चीं त्या मकरिस्ता स्थापना दिशा विद्यापीठा सो फक्ते विद्यापीठा खातिर नहीं सच गौर राज्य खातिर अन्य समस्त को अपनी मनुष्य खातिर एक बहु अभिमान तो अनेक गर्जे तो महत्वाचो आसुदीस कारण गौर संबंध साहसरांत जर एक विद्यापीठा सा जे कोकनी घोर शिकायता कोकनी भाष शिकायता कोकनी साहित्य शिकायता अनि कोकनी चाहे विद्यापीठ जाके मुनिया था तो शिन एकत्र विद्यापीठ संबंध संस्थान तथा त्या मैं गोएं विद्यापीठ मैं यह कहती मैं मक्का या विद्यापीठ आज का चलो अभिमान वेल योर एक्सेलेंसी आई फाइंड इट डिफिकल्ट टू स्पीक इन इंग्लिश इन फ्रंट Last six months, I've been traveling, and I think I have visited not less than six, seven, or eight uh, states. And everywhere I was invited, uh, most of the deliberations were held in their own language. Whether I was in uh, Orissa, it was the Odia language, in Guwahati, it was the Assamia, and uh, they took such pride, rather not even a pride, I would say, it's a matter of fact, they speak in their own language. And entire deliberations, except my speech, probably were held in uh, their own language. I also felt a bit guilty when in, in their presence because I, I could not, you know, uh, speak in their language, nor could they understand if I were to speak in my language. Yet, uh, I do appreciate and admire their pride for their own language. I was in Kerala for uh, twice during the uh, last two months. Once in Calicut and once in, uh, I would say, Kozikode, <laughs> rather than Calicut, in your presence particularly, and uh, also in Cochin. And the uh, same thing I experienced. So, um, yet, in Goa, the situation is a little bit different. If you go to market, I don't know whether I'll be able to speak in Konkani to everybody. It doesn't happen in other countries, other parts of this country. But then, Magdista, Amanga, Tumcha Mukhartari, Mujhe Kazachi Jeb Bhasa Sa, Tiz Aon Tumcha Mukhar Oro Pa Sutta. Ishtano, Adanga Varsal Pustaka Chai Prakashan Jala, Ani, Khar Maya, Maya Aon Zahan Te Abishen, Jadi Sa Tang Kare, The day my friend Prakash realized that the governor, incumbent governor is himself a writer, an author of several books, uh, and he was very happy that the book is going to be launched at your hands, sir. And, uh, but natural, of course, Kunjai Lekhakak Anand Zatlo, going to Rajyapan, Aple Pusaka Chai Prakashan Karte Munun, and that's why the Vidya Pita Chai Chancellor, the Kuluguru Asana, then Prakashala Iha Koshe Chai Disa, Amit Ajay Koshe Chai Sahabagi Zata, आओ जाना अंगा बकिचे ऐसा या पुस्तक के लिए संबंधित हम चे जाग प्रकाशन चे राजवसा दिती ऐसा अनेक बकिचे ऐसा आज खरेद साल तानी याद कर लिया ने मकाई भी आने विद्यापीठ तो आइले फिरे मकाई याद जाता थी माध्यमिक ची जा तरे जा डेडिकेशन अंते काम करता ने ते डेडिकेशन आज आने को ना मुझे ना � सगळे मलाचे अच्छे तरीके आमका निशांची आमके सदन सोडे गरे दसा अनि वर्षल या पुस्तका संबंधाव इतले मनन कि प्रत्येक अनि या पुस्तका बातचीत अच्छे तरीके या पुस्तका सी या पुस्तकां कितना 
कितें आसते पयल सांगता हे एक डॉक्युमेंटेशन द बुक वर्सल इज अ डॉक्युमेंटेशन ऑफ द रुरल लाइफ ऑफ गोवा रुरल लाइफ इन गोवा इज स्लायटली बी डिफरंट फ्रॉम द रेस्ट ऑफ द कंट्री बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द विलेजीस इन गोवा आर सेमी अर्बन पर्टिकुलरली माय विलेज यू हैव विजिटेड सर एंड यू हैव सीन इट सो बट देर आर सम रिमोट विलेजीस ऑफ गोवा पर्टिकुलरली इन सत्तरी विच इज डिपिक्टेड इन दिस बुक and also in other books other uh, area other areas like um, remote places of sangem or kanakona you will find the rural life life totally different the lifestyle is different the ethos they cherish is also a bit different from the rest of the urban and semi urban goa so um, and but this book is more important because it also documents the transformation that is happening in rural life आन ते सामके लागींच्यान तुम्ही पळवपा जाय समजतल तुमकां सत्तरींतली जी लोकजीण आसा ती आम्ही हांगा पणजे मडगांव सारखेल्या शारांनी जी पळयतात ताजी प्रस्कृत ती वेगळी आसा आणि कितलो बदल ह्या ओवर द इयर्स सो मच ऑफ ट्रान्सफॉर्मेशन हॅज हॅपन पर्टिक्युलरली द कल्चरल शिफ्ट दिट इज ऑबियस अँड ऑफकोर्स इट इज अपरंट इन द रायटिंग्स ऑफ प्रकाश you can i'll just give an example uh, where it is uh, uh, evident in the book also the the uh, cultural shift that we see in uh, uh, the cultural life of rural uh, villages there was a time when every celebration in village was a collective one whether it was a feast or festival or jatra or even a uh, wedding in the neighborhood or a birth happening in the neighborhood was a celebration for the community it is not happening anymore now the shift has already taken place we are more eager to have our birthday celebrations at home with friends we are uh, eager to have um, uh, say um, weddings where special invitees are uh, catered to it no more happens as an occasion for the rest of the village to celebrate so this shift is obvious in uh, uh, versal prakash book but we need to learn from this i mean goy ani goy ka pan samalpacha nadrin mukhar hotat thait asat kay pati pattat jo badal ghodun yata to bara khatir kay amcha गोयकारा गोयकारपण सांभाळपाचे नदरेन आम्ही फाटी फाटी वरतात काय किते सो द पिक्चर दॅट वी सी इन दिस बुक इज एन आय ओपनर अँड वी हॅव टू टेक स्टॉक ऑफ इट अँड वी हॅव टू लुक बॅक अँड सी वेदर चेंजेस दॅट आर हॅपनिंग इन द सोसायटी आर फॉर द बेटरमेंट ऑर नॉट सो गुड फॉर आवर सोसायटी सो वी हॅव टू लर्न फ्रॉम दिस डॉक्युमेंटेशन which we can see happening in this book i che di satsoi bi ani aaj chod karun he je badal jatat ta je ami dakhal ghew pa jay ani chod karun today uh, you know not only in goa and in our country and the worldwide phenomenon where uh, we are stationed in between the disease and disorder i'm not talking particularly political situation of goa it's, it's i'm talking about the social issues that are happening and not necessarily in view of the pandemic situation in goa but we are station we are caught in between uh, the disorder and disease and we have to look out for a way out from this how do we come out from this i think here goa university or other all universities have a special role to play to play because our future is at stake uh, it is in the limbo and i think with the kind of resources scholastic resources at the uh, disposal of our university we can you can certainly address these issues though in a limited sense but they have to address these issues which are affecting the community and in, also the literature has a role to play in this i think literature can serve as a tool the best tool if not the best i can say one of the best tools to bring to the notice of their readers and particularly in the, uh, the public at large 
the kind of changes that are happening and how to face them. Uh, whether it's in the prevailing situation, we need to take uh, cognizance of what is happening in our society and around. Ishtano, <coughs> it is also important that uh, the Versal is itself, uh, it, it talks about and you can see it as you read it, the transformation happening in terms of uh, the language, in terms of idiom, in terms of expression, the changes that have come over, um, over the last decades, few decades, the changes that have come about in our uh, language and literature. And uh, this is where exactly, this is precisely where uh, the university has to play a role. I am very happy they have spread their wings and also uh, spreading uh, out of the state. And I think I must thank uh, our uh, Honorable uh, Governor for taking initiative and guiding the university to, to take uh, the language studies across the borders where there are uh, Kokri speaking pockets in Mangalore and in Cochin especially and uh, of which uh, um, our Vice Chancellor has just made a mention of it. I wish you all the best in this endeavor and uh, well <coughs> I am happy to be here uh, on this day, on this, particularly on this Foundation Day, uh, to wish uh, the University all the best in the endeavor uh, they are going to take uh, in the next uh, few years, next uh, decades, I would say, because uh, I am very happy that School of uh, Language and Literature is named after Shanaim Goyambab. I am particularly happy because Shunayam Goyambab is one genius. He's a genius. He's, he had a vision of not only of the language and the people of the entire Konkani community. He had a vision to see a better society. Konkani as a language is a tool, is a medium, not the goal in itself. It's a means to achieve the goal. So, and I'm happy that uh, School of Language and Literature has been named after Shonayam Goyamba, who over the, uh, since liberation, I would say, his contribution is belittled, belittled by vested interests, particularly in view of the language controversy that, uh, you know, uh, that came our way, I would say, in the development of our language and literature. But now those days are over. We have to t turn b our back to it and look forward where uh, Shilohim Goyabab need to be reinvented, revisited by the university because the genius of him has to uh, reach across to not only to the community of Goa, students community of Goa, but across Goa because he needs that much attention. He was a visionary who has contributed richly to India's language and culture. I would, in brief, Your Excellency, I would like to bring to your notice what Chanayam Bab is to Konkani, is what Thunchan has been, has been to Kerala or Malayalam. This is enough for you to understand, I believe. And Portunik Fout, Anga Tumchim Madeiraon, Charanchi, Donachi Char, Zalimutran, Tumchim Mukhar Guleiraon, Tumim Prasesa Naikunin Ghetle, and Ink, yeah. Diasachir, uh, yeah, dignitary such as Madhyam Basun, as if I am representing Goa University, uh, I am sitting by the side of Vice Chancellor and Registrar. Uh, but then uh, I do take pride that I belong to this university directly or indirectly. And in the thank you very much. Thank you, Bhai Mauzo. Tumcha Moladik Utrang Khatir Tumka Dev Bare Guru. I thank the dignitaries for doing the honor and extend my wishes to the author of the book Versal, Dr. Prakash Pariekar. Many congratulations, sir. The most awaited moment of the Foundation Day celebration is here. Yes, it's the Foundation Day address. I invite Honorable Governor of Goa and Chancellor of Goa University, Sri P.S. Sridharan Pillai, sir, to deliver the Foundation Day address titled Endless journey to achieve the goal. Professor Harilal Menumen, 
Honorable Vice Chancellor of the Goa University. Janabid Lorait Damazji. Professor Vishnu Mutkarni, Registrar of Goa University. Dr. Prakash, respected faculty and my dear students. This is an auspicious moment in my life because now I am completing 11 months as the governor of Goa. Whatever, this is the first occasion for me to come to this university campus. You are not invited me, that is why I couldn't come. Anyway, this university is concerned. Of course, we are celebrating the 38th Foundation Day of the university. I'm first of all expressing my apology because I'm not in a position to address you in your ancient, beautiful language, mother tongue. If I address you in my Malayalam, you can't understand. So I am forced to switch over to a foreign language. Nothing wrong in it. Language, our concept should be, we will accept Anupadra Kadavo Yanda Vishwantaka. Let noble ideas, thoughts come from all parts of the world. Our tradition is that we accepted and respected it. But one thing, Honorable the mother ji expressed, I sent person degree with him. In 1956, there is a major amendment to our constitution. Subject to correction, I am quoting the article, whether it is, I think, 350, 350A. So 350 was originally there regarding language, and 350, a. Of course, regarding that section alone, if you uh, verify and uh, some from my memory, I am saying 350A is introduced with the sole purpose of giving priority. And of course, among the languages, it should be given first priority. And that is why that, uh, that amendment was passed by our parliament. But what is stated by the mother ji, of course that is true. Even though we are reluctant to implement that amendment in its full strength. So languages are concerned, I am remembering the words of Dr. Amanur Lohia. We all know the first revolutionary for our liberation of Goa. When in a party meeting, he asked the question, then uh, he was always arguing for, throughout his life, he was arguing for local languages and national language. He was one of the best uh, experts in English language. But he was, uh, whenever he was traveling in India, he used <coughs> Hindi or uh, local languages as far as possible. Then, in one of his parties meeting in 1953 or 54, workers asked the question, in villages, especially on the North Indian villages, about 59 to 60 percent of the people, citizens of this country, were illiterate. So under such circumstances, how? We can address the people, what language we should adopt. But question, his reply was that, that lang your language of your heart is the best language. Then he explained that aspect. I am not going into the details. According to him, English, Hindi, Arabi, Urdu, or any lang languages are concerned, the language of heart is so important according to Dr. Amanur Lohia. Then he quoted certain uh, examples also. 
one of i am remembering one if you go to a village men village people whenever you are meeting a village village citizen if he is sent person illiterate then if you talk to talk about harichandra then immediately that villager even though he is not in a position to read or write his name he could understand its meaning the embodiment of truth like that so the heart language is important for a public worker according to dr amanor lohia like gandhi ji also gandhi ji according to me i had occasion to read many of his books you see during his lifetime he was a perfect gentleman always using english and his english was uh, not only ordinary english so his english his standard in english and usage in english was excellent but his books are concerned majority of his books written by gandhi ji as in gujarati and he himself uh, took initiative to translate it into other languages also to english translation also along with that but he has he had occasion to write his books in local language gujarati so i am not saying that we will people all of us will only depend on our mother tongue or our local language but do consideration may be given to that when our vaishan uh, sir first visited me in rajbhavan i put a suggestion to him that you start a kongadi language center in kochin now he told that two more than 2 lakh people are there you see i think uh, hindi of course it is in the first position because language mother tongue in many uh, states in india if a second uh, language like that we consider according to my limited information i not uh, evaluate uh, all the languages but in four or five states people are using kongani as mother tongue in 2 lakh people he referred in cochin i am i, I am aware of the fact that in their houses respective houses those people are talking among their family members kongani if you come to karnataka also udupi mangalore and other places thousands of people are using kongani as mother tongue in their houses goa maharashtra only four four or five i talk to our vice chancellor also about this so in the light of our policy changed in 1956 as per the amendment to the constitution mother tongue should be given importance so if you are making a claim by goa goa of course a small state but language wise mother tongue is concerned i think in four or five states people are using kongani as a mother tongue and language in their houses so we will raise this issue throughout india and attract attract the support of our setup for the betterment of uh, this kongani and uh, you know, vice chancellor told me that some technical aspects and other things legal amendment and other things i told him frankly that you give me the concerned stipulation i am prepared to legally face it then he also got confidence about that then now he presented all these things before the chief minister according to uh, the latest information within short time we will be able to start the kongani language centers in other three states also then spreading our language to various parts of india and let us hope the best in this matter
And as far as this university is concerned, in subject of science and the various collected that uh, sections, Vice Chancellor already stated that the, we are in the we are one of the best universities in India as far as that those subjects are concerned. I don't know the language aspect. I know I have not uh, uh, studied about it. Anyway, equally we will give importance to languages also, and uh, it is told that Vice Chancellor already contacted certain foreign countries. And as under our 2020 new education policy, we are at liberty, even the universities can opt to have that uh, two, de two degrees, dual degree and uh, other uh, foreign universities also some relationship with them and we will be able to uh, teach our students on that aspect. So, this is a, one of the uh, important tourist apps in the world and uh, that is why this university should be an instrument for our spread our, widen our concept regarding languages and uh, according to me, this is the need of the hour. Anyway, regarding my speech, it is my pleasure to be among all of you this morning on the occasion of the 38th Foundation Day of Goa University. This is a very important day for all those who care for the progress and development of the university. It is day on which we need to review our failures and our success and plan for a bright, brighter future. It has been nearly a year since I have taken charge of the office of governor and also ex officio chancellor of the Goa University. In a way, I am fortunate that I have to deal with the affairs of only one university in the state, unlike other governors who have to deal with several universities in the state. In, in any case, even this one university has not made my task easier. Soon after I took, uh, took over, we had the task of appointing a new vice chancellor and then the new registrar. Nowadays it is a very, very controversial in every state. <laughs> Appointment. I am fortunate enough because no controversy on that. Uh, both these tasks were fulfilled smoothly and without much ado. There were also several files pending regarding the university relating to amendments and statutes, ordinances, etc., etc., which I have cleared promptly. When I took charge, the files about uh, uh, aged four years, three years, four years or five years were there. I am very happy to say that all the files, not only regarding university, but uh, other fields also, governmental also, no pending file in the Raj phone. I can very happy to say that it is a bounden duty of disposing at the earliest. I am not making a comment that uh, delay, I am not blaming anybody. But un for unfortunately, I would uh, like to say one word. In our law, legal system, delay in justice is denial of justice. But the maximum number of uh, cases age of 10 years, 12 years, 13 years, pendency is there in the courts. So, delay in justice, disposing justice, is denial of justice is a concept, even though that is more pending in our uh, dispensing of justice field, I mean co uh, judiciary. Like that uh, in certain states, I'm not mentioning any specifically in, uh, name of any state, but nowadays the system is that, suppose a person approaches the government or the authorities for a license for a, or an industry or some or starting an education institution. Strictly, within one week, you will have to dispose that. 
that direction is existing in many states and in certain states if the concerned officer is not doing it he will have to give just like a punishment penalty some amount given to the chairman you can you are liberty to even uh, dismiss it deny it but pending file in the office is not a good trend according to our modern uh, concept in <coughs> delhi administration delhi union of india's policy so disposed all of almost all files i am giving its credit to our uh, rajbhavan staff including our secretary we see unfortunately in our country we are all uh, dealing with i am not any party or any administration or a government in 1947 august 14 15 and 16 while everybody was celebrating the freedom of india at delhi not a goa at that time also on this uh, uh, portuguese people's control but other parts we got in freedom in 1947 august 50 the person the champion for that cause and uh, who led our country mahatma gandhi was not in delhi was in some other uh, uh, bengal at that time in bengal on that day he has stated uh, he has issued one statement to those people from bengal to most leaders visited him and he then mahatma gandhi ji told them my freedom is a reality when the last men in the queue queue of development asking for development last men in the queue whenever he gets minimum then only i am satisfied and that too speedily this word also is there so under such circumstances so govan university also no delay here i am not fighting for with you the entire administration of goa is concerned you are producing the new generation such a an idea also may be bear in your mind and do it so i had occasion to release the book of dr prakash i deem it an honor to release the book parcel renowned konkani writer which is an anthology of 20 stories which have been previously published in this various konkani publications as far as stories are concerned our our damodar ji is one translation in one book translated in english and uh, one story that are so included in his collection of uh, malayalam books your one story then i i found that uh to dr prakash a rural village rural areas villages and other people's life is uh, depicted in his stories and complimented for the same thing i am very happy to say that the rural goa's life really pictureized in the books of our damodar ji also i really congratulate him the book is named the uh, pujan story varshal which portrays caste based sufferings which is rejected by a new generation the stories of perinkar have been described as gems of konkani language which is rich rustic and celebrates nature and its communion with the rural folk the stories offer students rich scholars and the avid readers of konkani literature an opportunity to explore no critical perspective hither hither to undiscovered on this occasion i would like to commend professor uh, prakash for this wonderful book and i am sure that all the readers and lovers of kongal literature will be enlightened by his stories in this context i am happy to learn that goa university is making vigorous efforts to set up a center for studies in konkani in kochin which will not only kochin in mangalore also proposal is there uh, which will be beneficial to the konkani speaking population in the southern states of kerala karnataka kerala and karnataka 
Goa University, ever since it was up, established in 1985, has grown steadily. Over the past 35 years, the university has steadily expand, uh, expanded its reach both in terms of number of affiliated colleges, professional and general education numbering 62, as well as the diversity of courses offered also. These colleges offer various courses leading to a degree at the graduate and postgraduate level. Among them, 12 colleges are also recognized as research centers to offer PhD programs. Over the years, university has developed various facilities on the canvas. I am also happy to learn that the university has undertaken academic restructuring of, and that the university has got plans of introducing 22 programs and also improving the infrastructure of the university. And the uh, next point I want to stress is the, with respect to the implementation of the National Education Policy 2020. Uh, and the university has already taken steps to implement it at its full strength. I am happy to know that Goa University is committed to implement NEP 2020 in higher education with effect from the academic year 2023 and 24 and has already taken certain initiatives in that direction. These include amalgamation of various teaching departments into totally 10 schools of studies. This will serve the purpose of flexibility, remove and remove hard separations between disciplines and also help in providing multidisciplinary and holistic education in a much better way. Three more schools are planned to be established. No, no three. Already. To serve the purpose of flexibility of university had adopted the choice-based credit system way back in 2010 on its campus for PG programs and made it effective for all undergraduate general education program since AY 2017 and 18. Further, the house uh, online learning initiative named Digital Integrated System, uh, etc., etc., are also implemented. Then, another Bharata Bhiyan. My experience is with, you, with the university uh, students and others. I had occasion, I was impressed with the implementation of the UNAT, UNAT Bharat Abhiyan. The university has adopted five villages and recently. I happened to visit one of the villages, uh, Madakai, during my Goa Sampurna Yatra. So I, I have already covered more than 150 villages as a part of my, my Goa Sampurna Yatra. Normally, it is very difficult for arranging a governor for a program. In most of the villages, out of this 150, First time a governor is visiting, about 80% of the villages, first time in their, in their life a governor is visiting their place. So, when I visited there, as an uninvited guest, I visited that places. I don't know whether the governor's status is reduced. <laughs> that also I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, when I, this Madikai village, when I uh, visited, our Vice Chancellor and others uh, arranged that uh, village leaders and people there. And on that day, I was very happy to see that the demolition of marine farming and harvesting of mussels, that is shellfish. It was heartening to learn from the farmers about the substantial income accruing to them from marine farming, which enables them to have a steady source of livelihood. A university took initiative, prompted the people and in a systematic manner they arranged everything including financial help and as a part of that I, I was very happy, happy moment in my life because Gandhiji's concept of Grama Swaraj, at least among the that uh, Madikai village among the fishermen that Gramaswaraj concept our Gadiji's 
finance philosophical not only he was not a philosophical alone when he started the uh, freedom movement's leadership immediately he stated to the people of india in 1930s that we will fight for three types of freedoms one is political freedom opta attain no opta in political freedom in 1947 august 15 british people bid farewell and uh, our own rulers so political freedom freedom with the new constitution we achieved but gandhi in 1933 onwards he declared every person who is fighting as a volunteer of the congress party the fighting force for getting freedom you should fight for political freedom economic freedom and social freedom i am not going to the details and these students should try to understand all these things what type of vision was in the at that time in the mind of our uh, gandhi ji the pandi bhojan the harijana uddharan that uh, khadi all these things economic freedom and social freedom for the social freedom he declared untouchability is a crime his fight for a the those people certain people are untouchables they are not allowed to enter the temples in various parts of the country in tamil nadu madura kalikad in kerala vaikam i am remembering all those things that is part of the freedom struggle and such a persons ambition in life grama swaraj i don't know i i i, I refer it in detail because a sort of grama gramin republic i am not using the word republic because sovereignty is with our country and our constitution our rulers and other things i am accepting it in toto but gandhi ji's vision even you go to the extent of that village peoples as far as possible just like a republic a village republic not challenging the indian sovereignty or, or, or goa sovereignty or uh, delhi sovereignty but that is such a visionary gandhi ji his sankalpa of grama swaraj i had occasion to see its a small form in that village and of course took initiative by our university and i congratulate all of you for such a great achievement i would also like to urge the vice chancellor to undertake more such projects that will reach out to grassroots level of villages and make a difference in the lives of the people i i am sure that these are excellent examples of grama swaraj of mahalma gandhi ji then endless journey to achieve the goal already our uh, uh, damodar ji stated i don't want to go much on that then finally i would like to mention one aspect our education system of course education is the manifestation of the perfection already in a man that is a concept of uh, of swami vekananda gabriel marcus the last century he was the greatest writer in the world one of the greatest writers in the world i, I can say like that latin american writer wrote when i sit down to write comma which is essential moment in my life comma i am completely alone so uh, writers tapas you can see concentration we can see mindset we can see from this marcus opinion and some vegandas opinion and uh, he is completely alone he suffer his affirmation is true and gandhi ji's concept also was like that what the education policy of course we have not implemented 
as a governor i can't blame anybody gandhi ji in his life interested dr sakir hussain for implementation of varda education scheme but unfortunately not implemented maybe reasons me I, i don't want to go to the reasons and uh, confucius is famous uh, opinion how many years back if you are thinking for a one year you can cultivate paddy if you are thinking about few more years you can put some tree or uh, some plantation or something like that if you are thinking about the future of hundreds hundreds and hundreds of years you will have to give education this is the view of confucius and uh, we are uh, free from imperialism either uh, britain or here uh, goa is concerned portuguese and i would like to say we all must understand what was the condition of our motherland india about 500 years back at that time we called our country ratna garbhayam bharat the most affluent wealthy state in the world about 3 years back there was a seminar in a university at london then two sides are there then uh, whether the east india company arrival of east india company whether beneficial for india or not that was a subject of discussion then a research scholar presented his paper stating that unity of india was a, was occurred during our period during the period of uh, east india company railway was introduced number of ics people ics people increased universities established so many achievements were uh, placed in his presentation then the, on the other side also a research scholar from that university that too from a, a four boy from britain he put a simple question about 300 years back what was the total contribution of undivided india undivided i mean india pakistan and bangladesh what was its contribution to the world trade then he himself answered by presenting documents that 27% of the world trade was controlled by our bharat undivided india then next question he posed before the audience that in 1947 when britishers bid farewell to india what was the share of india undivided india to the world trade he himself placed the statistics 2% so 27% means at that time world trade was controlled by us the industrial revolution and other things are also that is a subject to be looked into by you people i don't want to dhaka muslin and other things are there how the britain became the largest uh, dress producing cloth producing country in the world in the, if we go to the detail then dhaka muslin and other things are there that field was become the monopoly of britain because of their control over india so such, we will when the education field also our universities all those universities people from all over the world were coming to india this was a situation of course modern uh, change in the, in the education field and the scientific field also we will uh, uh, accept and uh, that is why in indian constitution the way, the, the first two sentence india that is bharat india is also a no ancient ancient world in the civilization and other things are there 
But why this, uh, this is a uh, uh, constitution, why this is India that is Bharat? That means we want to include both the scientific developments, all developments we are prepared to receive, modern India. At the same time, ancient India, Egam Sat Vipra Bhagadavadanti. Let noble thoughts come from everywhere. Our religious concept is also like that. Even the uh, Motherji is here, he is a Pandit. I don't want to go in the, to the details. Charvaga concept. Charvaga is a person who challenged the existence of God. You see, in Kerala, I had occasion to see then Brahmins are uh, changing in Avani Avatam, which is called in Kerala as Avani Avatam. They are. Uh, they are uh, that is called Jinva. In, in Malayala, it is called Poonul. So, changing that day, they are remembering, and uh, at that time, one of the important prayer is that for the forefathers, respect is being given. While giving the respect to them, uh, Vishnuaya Namaha, Shivaya Namaha, all those things. Then you see Charvagaya Namaha also is there. So that type of country, Sarva Dharma Samabhav. All what is the equivalent word for a Dharma? Is it religion? I'm not an English pundit, but I would like to say there is no proper word. Dharma means any dharma you can follow. No discrimination. Indian constitution also, discrimination is prohibited. That is why our constitution is the greatest constitution in, in the world. So, this university, of course, we are respecting the light. We are getting enjoyment out of it. If a birthday celebration is there, I am not criticizing own people or Kerala people. Whenever that celebration, of course, cutting the cake and other things. If the boy is, that, that girl is, or the child is, 10 years, 10 lambs will be there. This is, this we will think about it. So we are getting enjoyment by lighting the lamb. Belichame Naich Chalu. That was a, that uh, girl was uh, stated while she was inviting us. She, that slow, slow that uh, our traditional concept was expressed. Like that, so many things are there. If in England, crown is exempted from punishment. Crown is exempted. In Anglo-Saxon Anglo Indian law also, that concept is there. But was, what was our tradition? Our tradition was that at the time of uh, this uh, kings, that moment of when all the, a new king is going to take charge, then a puja was there. Then in that puja, at the fag end of that puja, he will tell to the world, including that Purohida, Adandos me, Adandos me, Adandos me. That king became the all in all in every field. All property belongs to him. He, he, he will become the Sarva Sainyadiva. Everything is, every power is vested with me. Then he will say, Adandos me, Adandos me, Adandos me. Nobody is there to punish me. Then that person who is doing that uh, function, controlling the function, a Purohit with a small dand with him, on the Murda, three times, Dharma dandos me, Dharma dandos me, Dharma dandos me. That is why Bhishma once told, if Dharma is there, no need of a king. So, People are supreme. Dharma is supreme. 
and we are all under the governor and all of these are under the i am powerful i am the head of the state no nothing is there people are supreme dharma is supreme and this university also of course molding the new generation this types of thinking also should be there and uh, curriculum i can't say you in group some other activities some discussions and other things may be there open this types of thing before this new generation let them only four or five person let them think about it arnold toyn be an important uh, is one of the greatest philosophers ever seen by us arnold toyn he stated that change in the society can be made but not by a mob he called a creative minority in a society all are busy with our activities nothing wrong in it but every so in every society in every change in the world he quoted french revolution russian revolution even we take the case of our indian freedom struggle at that time maximum 4 or 5 percent indian people were in the forefront of the freedom struggle all others are concerned 90 percent they want to a king their livelihood for getting something so many are suffering so we can't insist all of your ideologists and do this not do this instead of that this four or five person in a village two three good patients are there are not to be called them as creative minority in a society the present question is where is that creative minority if you are able to produce some creative minority then they will be the classic example and they will lead the people and in such a way we will be able to achieve the goal our uh, damodar ji has talked about achieving the goal i am sure that we will be able to achieve the goal thank you very much jai hind thank you sir i sincerely thank the honorable governor of goa and chancellor of goa university shri ps sridharan pillai sir for his words of wisdom which are our greatest take away on this foundation day as an expression of our sincere thanks and gratitude i now request the registrar goa university professor v s natkarni sir to present a fruit basket to honorable governor of goa and chancellor of goa university shri p s sridharan pillai sir thank you sir i also request honorable vice chancellor sir to present a memento to our chief guest for today honorable chancellor of goa university shri p s sridharan pillai sir thank you sir we owe a deep sense of gratitude to our special invitee for today shri damodar mauzo i request the honorable vice chancellor goa university professor harilal menon sir to present a memento to shri damodar mauzo thank you sir professor v s natkarni registrar goa university sir it is your privilege to now propose the vote of thanks i invite you to do the honors good morning one and all let me once again wish all of you the very happy foundation day 38 foundation day honorable governor of goa and chancellor of goa university sri P. S. Sidharan Pillai ji, Honorable Vice Chancellor Goa University Professor Harilal Menon, Shri Damodar Bab Mauzo, Secretary to Honorable Honorable Governor Shri Meer Vardhan, Deans of Schools, Faculties, Vice Deans, Faculty Members of University, Affiliated Colleges. officers and non teaching staff students invitees ladies and gentlemen i have the proud privilege 
of proposing vote of thanks today on behalf of the university and my own behalf on this occasion of the 38th foundation day uh, foundation day celebration of our university first and foremost i express my profound and sincere thanks on behalf of the entire university fraternity and my personal behalf to our honorable chancellor sir for his august presence today and for presiding over this function and enlightening us with his kind words of wisdom on this occasion on the topic endless journey to achieve the goal i also thank honorable chancellor sir who is also known to us as a prolific writer for releasing the book versal written by our colleague dr prakash pariyekar and for encouraging all of us in such academic activities i must say here that honorable chancellor sir has always been very kind to all of us and has always been guiding goa university since last year july 2021 for us he has he is always known to take keen interest in the university affairs in spite of his very busy schedule and provide us very valuable guidance whenever required and has remained a source of inspiration i once again thank you sir for your unstinted support and also look forward for a similar affection in future i wish to place on record our thanks to shri damodar bab mauzo a pr very proud son of this soil and nanapit awardee from our state for his kind presence and for his words on this occasion i am also thankful to media and member of press who are here for giving a wide coverage to this particular function i also wish to thank all those including our student and staff officers who have helped us in making all the arrangements for this particular function last but not the least my thanks are due to all faculty members colleagues invitees and everyone who is present here in this audience for making this function a grand success once again i would like to thank each one of you with sincere feelings of gratitude i take your leave thank you thank you sir i now invite the group of students from shinoy goebab school of languages and literature once again to sing the national